Thank you for tuning in to Upon the Rock broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Lawrence Shakir. I believe the Word of God will build a godly foundation in the lives of people. There is more available information on our website. You can log on to ShakirMinistries.org. Now, let's go on to today's message. You know, yesterday we had the prophetic conference, right? Yeah, that was good. We got activated. A lot of people got activated. People's lives were changed. And um, it was, uh, I almost had you all come up here and just start to, you know, we're going to exercise more of the prophecy and the the prophetic voice. We're going to do that in the coming weeks. But, um, you know, originally it's supposed to have been two days, okay? Uh, But it's, it was, she had a family emergency, so we had to just make it one day. And so I actually didn't prepare for Sunday and t- because I just, I just learned about it like the day before or that day of, excuse me. Uh, and so after the prophetic conference, we went home and you know, took my family to the movies and everything. And I was so tired and I said, God, I know I need to preach tomorrow, um, but what do you want to say to the people? You know, uh, because I wasn't prepared. I could have done an archive message, but I knew that's not what God wanted. Uh, and I had something that, that I never talked to you on, but I knew that wasn't what God wanted. So I went to bed with the faith that God is going to give me something. So I woke up 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's always 3 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah. How many of y'all wake up at 3 in the morning? It's always 3. It's never like 1 or it's always 3. But anyway, so I woke up at 3 and I heard the Spirit of God said, you got enough rest. And so I went in. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well. So I went into the office and... Here came the words. He just gave me this thing that he said, all I want you to do is read this to the people. Because, um, and you're going to see why I, I said this, but to me, I think one of the main things that's missing with the body of Christ is, no, not with the body of Christ, but just as in the church, the organization is the church. Not the body, us, people, but just the organization of what we do when it comes to service is the presence or the encounter with God. See, we have programs, but sometimes there's no spirit. There's no presence. There's no encounter. And a lot of times people are just satisfied with just the service, but they don't have any drive or hunger for his presence. Y'all get what I'm saying? Am I the only one that that sensed that or y'all picked that up too? Yeah. I mean, even with us, we try our best to do a good service, but I don't want any kind of service if God is not here. You know what I mean? I'm tired of just having church if God is not here, if God is not present. So he told me to tell you all that where is where is the glory? If I say the glory. See. It used to be that people, all they do was talk about the glory of God, the glory of God. But now that's kind of one of those things that people just just don't talk about anymore. And so, very simple message. It's called, show me your glory. Very simple. Uh, Turn one down just a bit. Y'all don't mind if I just play a little worship while I teach? I'm very influenced by music, if you all can't tell. I know I can't sing. But I try. That's good right there. So the title is Show Me Your Glory. We know about Moses. He was so close to the glory of God that his face would shine like the sun. People couldn't even look at him because it was so bright. And the Bible said they were afraid to look at Moses because the glory of God was on him so thick. And then you hear about these generals back in the 60s and 70s where they would just walk into a room and say, the Lord is in this place. And people with no eyes, eyes would pop open. People would pop out of wheelchairs when you see these people who encountered the glory of God and people will get healed and, you know, there's revivals across the nation. And then you ask yourself, what happened to the church? How come we don't see these things anymore? And it's like, are we so content on just having church that we miss the glory, we traded in programs for the glory. 
And as long as it's paying the bills, I don't care. Well, I have got to the point where I say, I don't care if nobody comes or they do come. I don't want to do a church if your glory is not here. I can do better things if God, if, if I mean, why would I want to just come here and just kind of put on a show and God's presence is not here? So God says, tell my people to put a demand on the glory once again. People don't want glory as much as they claim they do. You know, as long as I'm going to heaven, I'm fine. But I want, and I'm not trying to be selfish, but I want more than just going to heaven. I don't want just fire insurance. I want to be able to have the glory of God in my life right now, in the land of the living. And then when I get to heaven, it's just an upgrade of that glory, you know? I already know I'm going to heaven. But I need the glory while I'm here on earth working a nine to five. <laughs> right? You need the glory of God when, when you want to act out on somebody else. You need God's glory then. When somebody is sick and you want, you want God to be able to heal you, you need God's glory then. And I'm not talking about chasing behind every evangelist with a white suit on, superstar preachers. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about having the glory of God in your personal life. And every believer can have that. So he wanted me to kind of take my time, if that's okay with you all, read the Bible to you all, let you read it for yourself too, and we're going to discuss the glory. Everybody say the glory. Now I've been in ministry for over seven, about 17 years, going on 18 next year, but um, I haven't heard a whole lot of talks about the glory. Yeah, I know we talk about prosperity, and that is true, but I think we get a little too top-heavy on certain things. Not saying that God doesn't want to provide your finances. He does. But I don't think we should just trade in certain things because it gets a reaction out of people. Y'all get it? Um, so if you all have your Bibles, just go to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. In fact, real quick, pause there. He said, go to take them to 34. Exodus chapter 34, verse 29. Just go there. Then we'll go back to Exodus chapter 32. We're going to read the Bible today. And we're all going to encounter him. Are you there in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29? All right. The Bible says, when Moses came down from, I hear pages turning, but it's fine. We're going to, you can keep up. It says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hand, this is the NIV version, he was not aware, everybody say aware. He was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Where is the times where we just steal away and speak with God? Not having a prayer time and saying, oh, I clocked in my time. But no, sitting in the presence of God, waiting on the encounter for him. He said he, he wasn't even aware. Time had went by. He didn't even know that he was going with the presence of God. And I think people are having a prayer time just to say they pray, but not spending time with God. And there's a difference. You can pray. And you still had your prayer time. But when you spend time with God, that's when the encounter comes. So he wasn't aware. Oh, Lord, I was just talking to you and fellowshipping. I was just worshiping. I was just laughing and talking. And I had no idea that your presence was on, on me so strong. And then the Bible talks about right here in verse 30. Um, when Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant. They were afraid to come near him, but Moses called to them. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all of the leaders of the community came back. I love that part. They came back. There's some people that's in your life that will be gone and away from God, and they're going their own way. You got family members that are not on God's side, but when you call to them, they will come back when the glory is on your life. Do y'all hear that? And what God wants us to do is to encounter him. And it doesn't take much to spend time with God. It just takes a few sacrifices. Cut off the TV. Cut off the phone. Cut off everything else and steal away and just turn on the worship. And lay before him. Lay on your face. And then you will encounter him. Now, 
there are some times, there are some people who actually had this happen to them where their face would, would glow. In our generation, it would happen. So God is not a respecter of persons. And it's not about their face glowing, it's just about the glory of God is on your life. That when you walk in a room, when you walk in the atmosphere, walk in a job, the whole atmosphere changes because you walked in a room. That's the glory of God. But you know what? It's rare for some reason in our generation. You don't see this anymore. You hear about it with Smith Wigglesworth. You hear about it with Catherine Kuhlman. You hear about it with all of these great generals. But it's like, where are they at in our generation? Everybody say the glory. So he called to them and they came back and he spoke to them. Afterwards, the Israelites came near and he gave them the commandments or he gave them God's word and that, that the Lord has given them on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking, verse 33, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the presence of, of, of the Lord to speak to him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. He kept going in the presence and coming out to talk to the people, into the presence of God, come out to talk to the people, into the presence of God and come out. He didn't just come and say, oh, I guess God said this. It wasn't, he didn't have gas talking. He had God talking. And a lot of times people confuse it. Ooh, I got some jerks. I think the Lord is saying this. No, but did you spend time with him? Because a lot of times we get in the flesh and we just think it's God, but we don't spend time with him. We had a prophetic conference and we're all activated. But let me tell you all something. If you don't uh, sharpen that presence of God, your prophetic gift will not be strong. You have to take time to stand and sit in his presence and let him radiate himself on you. Okay. Otherwise, we just had another conference, another show, another presence, another event but I don't want another event I want to encounter him one more time everybody say the glory the glory is real for for us if we have the expectation I would say to want to receive it but if we just sit around wait for service to be over wait for prayer time to be over wait for us to knock out these few scriptures so we can clock in our time if we do things like that and treat God like that, there's no glory coming. There's no glory. And so God will wait until you come to the end of yourself so that he can tell you that wasn't it. That was just all you. We can't just sit around in God's presence and just yawn. Lord, when, when are you going to be done with this? I'm bored. As if it's God's job to entertain you. <laughs> he don't get paid to be an entertainer. I mean, he can entertain you. But God's job is not to make you feel good. You can do that with a lot of stuff in the world. God is, is here to give you his glory. One more time. Everybody say his glory. glory. Alright. Verse 35. He said uh, they, they saw that his face was radiant when Moses put the veil back on his face until he went to speak to the, uh, speak to the Lord. Okay. So now let's go back to 32. As you can see the relationship with God and Moses he had a fellowship. He just talked to him. All he did was go up on Mount Sinai and say, hey, Lord, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Moses. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. How's things going with everything else? Oh, you know, up in heaven, I'm just running the universe. Everything is cool. That's how he would kind of fellowship with God, right? And I know when we try to go to God, we try to go, oh, magnificent, holy, so holy, so holy, so holy. Sometimes God like, are you done? You know, you don't talk like that, do you? Do you talk to your friends like that? No. Talk to me like I'm your friend. He called Abraham friend, right? And nothing wrong with being formal with God, but you ain't got to get all dumb deep on him because God is the deepest well, right? So a lot of times we try to impress God with our much speaking and it doesn't do anything. Just talk to him like how you would talk to anybody else and set aside time to talk to him. All right, so watch this. Moses was on the mountain again getting his instructions from God just a normal every day he just came out of Egypt God was in the process of giving them the Constitution or the Ten Commandments this is how you govern yourself as my people so he's sitting up there on the mountain getting instructions just minding his own business 
getting instructions and him and God are just fellowshipping and talking and laughing or whatever. And all of a sudden, God just says, you know what, Moses, get out of my face. I'm like, whoa, go back down to the mount. Go back down there because your people, that's what, that's what he said, your people now made a golden calf. And Moses like, hold on, whoa, we were, we were over, what? You know, it just kind of turned awkward. But look at the look at the verse right here. The Bible talks about right here. I think it's in verse 32. No, 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 no. Let's go to verse 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, get down. Go down because your people. See, you know, when they're in trouble, you always got to try to say, is, see, come get your son. Come get your daughter. You know, when, when somebody's doing something wrong, you, you put it like that. So that's how God was the first one to say that. Your people that you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from me, what I commanded them, and they had made themselves an idol cast of a shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Moses, me and you are good, but I can't stand and look at you right now. You need to go back down and fix your people because they got on my last nerve. It's like you saw another side of God. You never seen him and he was so he was so mad at them. He said, let's read it. Let's just read it. What do he say right here? He says, I have seen these people. Verse nine, God started popping off a little bit. I have seen these people. The Lord, uh, the Lord said to Moses, they are stiff necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then I will make a great nation out of you, Moses. In other words, he says, you know what? I'm about to kill all y'all, every single last one of you. Except you, Moses, I'll, I'll give you the same promise I gave Abraham. I'm going to make you a great nation, but I'm about to kill everything breathing over there. And then Moses is like, whoa, 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 God, calm down. Let me go and talk to them. Because God, you better do something because I'm, I'm about to set it off. And it's like, God was like, I mean, Moses was like, I've never seen God act like this. So he went down and they were, you know, <laughs> dropping it like it's hot and everything, you know. And then he was, he was telling them, you know, oh, well, I have some pictures here. Basically, he was getting instructions here. I, I didn't have time to put a whole lot of scripture, so I know you all are visual, so I want to just kind of put a picture of Moses. So he's listening to God, and then you know how it is when you listen to somebody and the conversation starts going south, and you're smiling at first, and then you're kind of like, uh, what's going on? You know, that's kind of like what happened with him and uh, him and God. He just knew something wasn't right. So when he went down to the to the children of Israel, he saw how distracted they were. He saw how they were so quick to turn away from the glory. And I think that's how we as the body of Christ are. We know what God has for us, but the, the nature of us, the world's nature of us is, is always trying to go and worship something else, always trying to go and do something else and follow our carnal nature. And yes, some of us don't know better, but you know something that, that I can't be doing this way. I can't do this, right? So let's, let's just read the Bible a little more because I got a few more things I want to say. He went down and, and he's, uh, I, want, I don't want to read the rest. This is a wonderful story. You all can read in your spare time, but I do want to skip down to verse 30. Can we go down to 30? So basically he, he destroyed the calf they had like almost like a civil war. He started killing people who wasn't on God's side. Verse 30, the next day, Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make an atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold, but now please forgive their sin but if not, Lord, blot me out of your book. I like that about Moses. I'm not, I'm probably not the guilty party and I know they, they messed up, but Lord, if you're gonna punish anybody, just, just punish me first. Don't punish them, just kind of punish me. And then God says, you know what? That's very good of you, Moses. But he says right here in verse 33, the Lord replied to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. You can turn one down just a little more, Isaiah. Just a little bit. It's good right there. Verse 33, the Lord replies, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go lead the people to the place I spoke 
And watch this. Y'all got y'all got to catch this. This what this is what God showed me when it comes to this verse. Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Verse 34. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, oh, I'm going to punish them for their sins. Verse 35. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. So y'all can still go to the promised land. I told you you can go to the promised land, but I'm not going with you because of the golden calf that you have put up because of the idol that you have formed and turned that into your God. I don't mind you having gold, but when you start worshiping the gold, I have a problem with that. I don't mind you having things and houses and, and things that make you happy, but when you start worshiping that, me and you got a problem now because I brought you out of Egypt and then you're gonna quickly turn around and disrespect me like this? You don't want my glory, you just want the things. And so he says, y'all can go. Yeah, I'm mad, but I'm not gonna go with you all. I'm just gonna send my angel. And yeah, my angel represents me, but he's not me. Y'all get it? I'm gonna send my angel with you and y'all gonna get to the promised land, but don't come talk to me anymore. Look how mad God was. And this is where well, all of this kind of spoke to me. But look at verse 30. We're going to go right to chapter 33. Y'all okay? Y'all getting anything? Okay. We're just reading. He told me, read the Bible to you. Verse 33, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, leave this place. You and your people, you brought out of Egypt. <laughs> He's still mad at him. Leave this place. Y'all, you brought them out of here. And go to the land I promise you on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying that I will give it to your descendants. Verse 2, I will send my angel before you to drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Butlites, the Nightlites, all the Motherites. <laughs> Verse 3, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might just destroy every last one of you on the way. You may get me so mad, I may just, just, just pop off and just start killing, just start killing everybody. God says, I'm so mad at y'all, I don't even know what to do. I can't even look at you right now. If I just kind of be with you for a moment, I may just remember and just start, just start chopping everybody down. And it's like, my goodness, God, we sorry. Yeah, I know you're sorry, but you don't know what that did to me. I can't, that's what he said in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. That's why it's the first commandment. Don't you put anything above me. Because if you do, me and you are enemies. And so that's what happened with, with Moses or the, the children of Israel, excuse me. They just, the first chance they got out of Egypt, first time they got some success on their lives, first time they got out of bondage. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me out of debt. The first thing they did is do something ungodly. And God says, oh, okay. I see where your heart is at. You're a stiff-necked person. He can't stand. I don't know what a stiff neck person is because sometimes I sleep kind of wrong. My wife tell me my pillow be all up here and I wake up like this and I can't move and I'm going to work and everything. And I'm looking like a fool. Well, I think they look like a fool, too. When, you, when you're like a stiff neck person in the spirit, you just kind of like you just look like a fool, you know. So I think that's what happens with. Uh, what, what how we treat God's presence is that if we if we are serious about him, there ought to be some type of corresponding action that we really want him and not just the things from him, right? All right, uh, verse four says, when the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn and no one put on any ornaments. They took off the gold that they were worshiping. Verse five, for the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff necked people. If I was to go with you, even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments, and I would decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments and Mount Horeb. So in other words, Moses like the mediator, of course. He said, God is mad. I never seen him like this. That thing that y'all did is really, is really bad. I'm gonna try and go and talk to him, but y'all better pray that he come with us. So what Moses did is he developed something called the tent of meeting. Everybody say the tent of meeting. Every believer, needs a tent of meeting. Did y'all hear me? It can't just be something in the Bible. 
you need a tent of meeting. It's the same thing what Jesus had the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the same thing that Elisha had at the top of the mountain. Everybody needs a place where they meet God. Did y'all hear me? If you are serious about the glory and you're serious about having a serious walk with God, you have to have a tent of meeting so that God can put his glory on you. And God will start to reveal to you, this is your tent. Y'all hear me? This is your tent and you have to meet, you have to keep the, the appointment with him. If you're supposed to meet with him at the tent of meeting every week at five o'clock, you better make sure you're there because that's God's way of trying to put his glory on you. Y'all hear what I'm trying to say? This is for the mature believers. I know a lot of milk Christians don't want to do this because they don't want that much of God. They just want fire insurance. They want to get to heaven. No, you jump ahead of me. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's the tent of meeting, right? And what happened was, um, since they went there, let me just go ahead and read the scripture. Verse, what verse, Moses? Seven. Seven. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. I like this part. Anyone inquiring of the Lord will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went in the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents. Everybody say their tents. Watching Moses until he entered the tent or the tent of meeting. Verse 9. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud will come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. So you always knew when Moses was in there because you will see the cloud coming there. The cloud was there. It was the glory cloud that was there. And so the people, when they saw Moses go into the tent, I didn't read it, but let's go to the next part. Whenever the people saw, verse 10, whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshiped. They all stood and worshiped, each at his entrance of his own tent. In other words, when, you, when they saw, you know, their leader was going in, they went in too. Whenever they saw that this is a move that God is going, they all got on one accord and stayed on their, stayed in front of their tent. In other words, stayed on their level, but they were all in agreement. And God talks, it talks about right here. I just keep, I just gotta keep reading the Bible, it looks like. Verse 11, the Lord will speak to Moses face to face as one will speak to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. I'm gonna pause right there. So when he went inside the tent of meeting, he can see, him and God would just talk. And that's how his face, just like on Mount Sinai, his face would glow because he was in the presence of God. And he would spend time, and I like how it says the tent of meeting was outside of the camp. Y'all get that? There ought, to be, there ought to be a time, there ought to be something in your life that's like outside of your normal, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday thing. You need to have, he said, Moses pitched the tent outside the camp. Don't wait to find a perfect time to meet with God, sometimes you got to make your tent and make time and put it outside. This is my time with God. Kids knocking on the door, people trying to call you. No, 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 I'm meeting with God. I'm talking about being serious about encountering the glory of God. And I know it's not a popular talk in our generation, but it's possible. Y'all get it? If we're gonna be sharper in whatever God calls us to be, we need his glory. We can't just have the angel, which represents the form of God. No, I don't want just the form. I want him. Y'all hear me? Sometimes in churches, we have the angel there, so to speak. We have the, yeah, it's God, represents God. We got everything that looks nice, but it's his glory there. Or is it Ichabod? The glory has departed. I don't want to, I said it again, I don't want to build a church if God's glory is not here. I think if we're going to do something for God, we need to go behind the veil. I think we have to be serious about it so that the glory cloud will, will show. And even if it's not a physical way, I mean it can, but I'm just saying that when people come here, they need to experience the glory, not another service. Because we... Did I beat a dead horse already? I'm gonna beat it again. Uh, I'm tired of just services. 
I want his glory. But it takes all of us. The Bible talks about the tent of meeting was available for everybody. It wasn't the tabernacle. It was actually the first stage before the tabernacle. So he had a tent of meeting first. And then as they grew with God, he developed the tabernacle, which, we, which we're going to start talking about too. But first it was just the tent of meeting because it's outside the camp. Why? Because inside the camp, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff is going on. People still will want to worship golden calves. People want to do all kinds of things when they're inside the camp. But that's why you got to take something outside because that's where God is. Hope y'all get what I'm trying to say. Okay. But look at the latter part of this scripture. It says, then Moses will return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So when Moses walked out, Joshua walked in. Y'all see that? The reason why, and the Bible said that Joshua never, never went to the camp. He always stayed with the tent. Is it any wonder why he was chosen? He knew how to encounter the presence of God. Moses couldn't just pick a guy like that. This, you need to find a guy who knows about the presence of God. So Moses was done speaking to God. He kind of went to the camp and then Joshua just stayed. I don't know, you can go back to the camp if you want to. I'm staying right here with the tent. And he went in when Moses came out. That's somebody who's thirsty for his glory. It never said that Joshua's face shone like that, but it could have. Maybe it didn't last as long as Moses. It probably just go on for like maybe three seconds or so. And Moses, you know, he wrote this book, so he probably didn't get a chance to see Joshua. Maybe Joshua told him, hey, my face was shining too. Like, oh, okay, cool. But it never made it to the Bible, but it could have. He knew how to go into the presence of God as well. And I think every believer needs to be like Joshua, where you kind of know how to stay with the tent and know how to go in when people are, uh, who has an encounter with God, okay? So in other words, don't let the preachers just go in behind the veil. The people gotta go in too. Y'all hear me? Everybody has to have the glory and thank God for, you know, ministers and preachers that kind of help lead and usher, but you can't put all the weight on them. Everybody gotta have their own tent for their own selves. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They amplify right there. In verse, uh, what verse was that? It was 11. I'm going to read it again. Amplified. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Moses returned to the camp, but his minister, Joshua, son of Nun, the young man, did not depart from the temporary prayer tent. He didn't depart. He just stayed around where the glory was at. And that's how he saw winning battles of Jericho. That's how he saw having all these miraculous things happen because he knew how to tap into the glory of God. I get it? And I think it's possible for every believer to have that glory experience. But if you never go and spend time with God, I mean, really spend time with God, then you won't have that glory manifestation. Now, how many of y'all really want to encounter God? Let me see your hands. Okay. Well, since I gave you this word, now you are accountable for that word. I'm not trying to bait and switch you or anything but basically now now that you got this word you have to kind of develop a tent and you have to build it yourself and meet him then you're going to start seeing all kinds of things happen you can see healing you can see deliverance you can see all kinds of things that you've been praying for all because you just know how to take time and spend time with him that's what i want i want our church to be a place where the glory is here not just another service I want to see people get healed. The Bible talks about that uh, when Jesus came to Martha and Mary because they knew him face to face, they said, our brother Lazarus is dead. And he said, where have you laid him? The, and they, they showed him where it was. And the Bible says that the next verse, he said this, he said, take away the stone. In other words, take away the very thing that's hindering me from moving in your life. You have a stone in front of your, your, your promise but you have a barrier that's there. Take away the stone. We know each other face to face, so why don't you remove the stone then? Remove the doubt. Remove everything that's causing you not to believe me 100%. You gotta take away the stone. But that only comes when you have relationship with him. He wouldn't tell you that if you were just another stranger. 
So since you have fellowship with him, and since you have the word of God, since you have the spirit of God in you, you know him face to face. So you have a blood bought right to enter in to all of these promises. But there's a stone in the way. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There's a stone in the way. So you got to be like Joshua a lot of times. It's good. One go out, the other one go in. And I just still want a little bit of that cloud that's, that's left over. Because I know it's going to be there with Moses there, but maybe I can catch the tail end of it. And sometimes you got to chase after God like that. You got to be hungry for him. I hope I'm talking to you all. All right. It says stay on that take away the stone thing. There's, there, there's a, search, a such thing called the spirit of doubt, which visits people to make sure that you don't have any faith in the, in the word of God. Because if you have, let me say it the right way. If you have the, the, the proper faith in the word of God, every single one of these promises should come to pass. Because the Bible says they're yes and amen. In other words, God is in agreement with that. But if you have a spirit of doubt, it will, he said, you make the word of God a none effect through your traditions or bad teaching or doubt. He could not do any mighty miracles in his hometown because of their unbelief. There's a spirit of doubt that was there. And what I'm trying to get you all to understand is that you can be as powerful as you want to be. You really can. But you can't have, you can't have any room for doubt. And that's where Moses was at. He just, he just didn't doubt God. God said something, he, he believed it. And that's why his face shone. But a lot of people, they probably go into a tent of meeting and like, well, you know, I don't think you're going to speak to me like you speak with Moses. See, that spirit right there is keeping you in bondage. So you got to take away the stone. Everybody say, take away the stone. There is something that's blocking you from the promise. And that's why he's saying you got to open up. Open up and let me come in. Let the king of glory come in. The king of glory. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. So in other words, he's the king of glory that we're looking for, but we have to let him in. There's a stone in the way. Stand up real quick, everybody. Stand up, just stand up, just stand up. Lift your hands, please. Lord, we rebuke the spirit of doubt right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of doubt that says that we cannot have these promises. Right now in the spirit, we are taking away the stone. We're taking away the stone. And we are letting the King of Glory come in to do what he wants to do. And we're just going to sit and we're going to let him do what he wants to do because he is worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy, Lord, right now. You're worthy. Just start, just start spont right now. Just spontaneously just start telling how worthy he is in your own way. Because when you're doing that, you are taking away the stone. You're taking away the stone. Remove it, remove it, remove it, and let him resurrect the dead things that you thought will never be raised again. You thought you would never have deliverance in that area. You thought you would never be healed in that area. You never thought that this can happen with you. If you would just take away the stone, I feel God saying this, just take away the stone and let my glory come in. Open the doors and let the king of glory come in. Press through. For some of us, it may be difficult because we don't have a tent of meeting, but you can do it. You can do this now. You can do it now. You can do it now. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. And by faith, I want you to see the stone rolling. For some of you, it's rolling faster. For some of you, it's rolling slow. But your faith has to kick in. We remove the spirit of doubt and see that stone rolling. See it rolling. See it rolling. See it rolling out the way. See it rolling out the way. See it rolling. See it rolling. Okay. Somebody's supposed to be getting healed. Whoever, whoever needs to get healed, just come down real quick. I just, I just want to pray with you. Somebody's supposed to be getting healed. Lord, I just pray for my sister right now in the name of Jesus, God, as I lay hands on her. You're laying hands at the same time. So God, I add my faith with her right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that when I lay hands on her, Lord, that your healing power will be made manifest right now. We have removed the stone. We are taking away the stone right now in the name of Jesus. Heal her, Lord, right now.
from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Heal my sister right now in the name of Jesus God. We, sp we speak the word of God over her life right now. You said you sent forth your word and healed them. Heal right now. Heal right now. Heal right now. Heal right now. We receive the healing. We receive the healing. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the doctor says, we receive the healing now. We receive healing now. Your healing is made manifest now, today. 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 The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Healing is available now. Now. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. I thank you, Lord, for your healing. I lay hands on my wife right now in the name of Jesus, God. That your word is made manifest right now, God. That as I lay hands on her, Lord, you are healing her. Heal now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We add our faith with her. Heal. Every cell, everything, every blood, every heal it, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Where there's lack, provide. Heal. The stone is removed. Resurrect, Lord. Resurrect, resurrect right now in the name of Jesus. Resurrect. Resurrect right now. We thank you, Lord, for healing, Lord. That it's healed now. Healing is available now, and healing is received now. Touch her. Touch. Touch. Touch, touch with your hand, touch. And we seal this right now, that it is made manifest because of your glory, not because of me, because of your glory. Your glory makes us whole, your presence makes us whole. And we will be like the ten, the, the tenth leper that will say thank you for the healing. Thank you for wholeness. We will not forget about you. Let it flow now, Lord. Let healing flow from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet and back up again. Let it flow. Let it flow, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. He just said to stop and pray for you all. I had to do that. So... You all agree with that healing? Amen. Sometimes God is unscripted like that. He wants us to just move when he say move. Because there's a certain window that you have to move in and that door can close. When the cloud is there, move. presence Lord your presence makes us whole your presence makes us whole I'm trying to get back to the teaching I really am but just stay there for a second just stay at the tent of meeting just stay and just stay before his face you are the king of glory you're the king of glory and by faith I can feel he I can feel healing in my hands. I I mean I'm not trying to sound like anybody. I can feel healing in my hands. Like it's some 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 kind of coldness or some kind of something. That's the that's the presence of God. And it's not me, it's him. Lord, let your healing be manifested. I believe I receive that. That that healing is 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 Manifest. I just believe that. I have no doubt. None. None. Lord, heal your people, I pray, God. And let... Let us encounter you. Let us encounter your presence that makes us whole.
think that's, that's I think that's what he wanted. You all can be seated if you want to. I'm gonna try to finish the rest, but uh, sometimes God wants to just do what He want to do, right? Um, what verse was I on? <laughs> twelve, I think. Yeah, Joshua didn't lead the ten, so let's go to twelve, and I'll. After this will be done. Um, it's an excellent story. I would encourage you all to meditate on this. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you found favor with me. See, a lot of people are like that. God loves you, you're his child, you're saved. You have a good idea of him. He said, Lord, that's that's surface stuff. That's great. I'm glad you know me by name and you have this favor. But the next verse says it right here. What do you, what do you say in the next verse? If I found, if it pleased you, verse 13, if it please, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Let me know how how you really are on the inside. I want to know why you got so upset with that. I don't I didn't know that about you. You need to show another dimension of yourself to me. That's what he's saying. Teach me your ways so that I can know you. You say you know me, you know my name. I know about you, but I really don't know you. It's in the tent of meeting where you discover who God is. Everybody say discover. So that's why he says right here, teach me your ways. Um, verse 13 if I found favor with you teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you I don't want the favor that I have with you to kind of just go away but let me continue to find favor with you remember that this is your people see he threw it right back at God y'all see that God was saying that's your people and God and Moses said yeah teach me ways but these are your people not mine so he had that relationship with God where he can kind of talk, go back and forth with him like that, right? And so um, verse 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Okay, that sounds good. My presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. That's just like saying, oh yes, I'm with you. My word says you are healed. Yeah, that's true. That's what it sounds like. And Moses heard the tone of God's voice. Yeah, your presence will go with me and I'll get rest. That sounds good. But look at how he said in verse 15. Then Moses said, if your presence does not go with us. In other words, there's two types of presence. Because God just said, my presence is going to go with you and you'll have rest. Moses said, if your presence don't go with us, we can't make it. So what kind of presence is, is Moses talking about then? He's not talking about the angel presence. How we just kind of just have something nice. No, I don't want something nice. I know it's you, but that's not what I want. I want, I want you. I don't want your hand. I want you. I don't want what you can give me. I want you, God. Moses had a revelation. Like Joshua had a revelation. I'm staying with the tent. I am not going out into the camp because I may end up worshiping a golden calf. I'm going to stay right here where it's safe. And then God told Moses, my presence go with you. That's not enough, God. I don't just want your presence. I want your presence. I hear, he's like, he, I heard you, God. And I heard the tone. You gave me this presence, which is nice. But I want the deep presence. The well that don't run dry. That's the kind that I want. Are y'all getting this? Okay, I'm almost done. Almost done. We're just at the tent of meeting a little bit. That's all. It's all about you, Lord. Verse 14. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Verse 15. Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me on my job? What else will distinguish me in my family? What else will distinguish me in my career moves or my kingdom work 
if your presence is not with us? Yeah, I can do a lot of good things, good showy things, but if your presence is not with us, I don't, I don't want to do anything. That's why I'm not concerned, again, when it comes to me in a church. I'm not concerned that we got more empty seats than people. I'm not concerned about that. If we just have his glory, that's all that counts. If it's just one person and we have God's glory, then we're doing good. I would much rather have just one person with God's glory than a house full of deadheads that don't want anything from God, you know? Give me people who want the glory that will stay at the tent of meeting like Joshua that won't leave. And then you can do exploits. I feel like I'm just talking to you all like how we sit down with a, with a cup of tea or something. I'm just kind of discussing, you know? I promise you, I didn't study this. I got this early this morning. This is fresh out the oven, fresh on the plate for you. I didn't, I didn't study, I didn't do anything. This, all of this right now that I'm saying is my study time in a way, you know? I got a few moments to kind of read it, prepare and ask God, and he said, just read the Bible and we're gonna fill in the gaps. Okay, well, thank you, Lord. And that's what, that's, that's what you're all getting right now. Now, y'all know me, I study too, don't I? I be studying, my wife will tell you, I study. So this was new to me to not study, to just get up and then read the chapter a little bit and get a few pictures and then just come up here and just, what? That shook me out of my comfort zone. Stretch, it stretched me out. I'm like, Lord, I gotta study. He said, you all right? You, today, today we gonna just figure it out. And that's what happens. So, yeah, it was prophesied. You're gonna get out of your comfort zone. Oh Lord, it's manifesting then. Jesus, I didn't know it was gonna be that quick. That was just yesterday. Three o'clock in the morning, get up boy. Get some pictures. That's your sermon. Read the scriptures to the people. We're going to do the rest. All right, Lord. Well, here it is. All right. Um, what will distinguish me from your people, from all the other people on the face of the earth? Verse 17. The Lord said to Moses. All right. You got me, Moses. You want my real presence. You don't just want the angel. Verse 17. I will do the very thing you have asked because I'm pleased with you, Moses. And I know you by name. Isn't that an awesome sentence for God to say to you? Okay, okay, you got me. You got me. I was going to blow y'all off the planet, but you, Moses, I like you. So what did you want me to do? Okay, you said in my name, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it because I like you, Moses. Me and you, we good. That's an awesome relationship to have with God. I was going to just kill everything breathing, but you, you, you good. So because you said it, we, I'm going to just erase the whole thing. That is because he knows how to encounter God. And God doesn't change his mind. He does relent. There's scriptures to prove that. But it's like when you have favor with God, there are certain things God will give you because he just likes you. You don't even have to so much pray for it. It's because... He likes you. He knows you, your name. He knows who you are, what you like. He's going to just give it to you because, because he just likes you. You don't even have to pray about it. That comes with the tent of meeting. And I'm so sorry I'm staying on this point for so long, but maybe you all need to get the tent of meeting because that's where the glory is at. So you got to build a tent. You got to build it. You got to build it in worship, build it in prayer, build it in devotions. When you wake up three o'clock in the morning, like he did with me, maybe that's the tent of meeting. That may be the tent. So don't be like, oh Lord, I can't sleep. Lord, help me go back to sleep. No, you need to, you, you need to get up and probably pray because I pray those prayers. Lord, help me to go back to sleep. I gotta go to work tomorrow, you know. But sometimes he may say, I miss you. Son, talk to me. You've been busy all week. This is the tent of meeting and you crawl out the bed and you just say, okay, Lord, I'm here, what, what you need? I just wanna say hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. But God will say, you know, you're not on my timetable. Uh, I'm not on your timetable, you're on mine. Three o'clock, wake up, boy. We gotta talk. What you need, Lord? I just wanna say hello. Oh, okay. And you just gotta love on him like that. I mean, that's how you, that's how you encounter God. And I think the reason why I'm just spontaneously preaching this sermon while I'm uh, see, almost like I'm sitting watching myself is because God, he, he says, I, I got you. Don't worry about your plans. I'm building you. I'm building your family. I'm building your church. I'm building your life. 
because I know you. And sometimes you just have to just have relationship with him where you're not serving him because of, I don't want to go to hell or serve him because I don't want to be broke. I don't want to, you know, no, I'm just serving him because I just, I just love you, Lord. And that makes all the difference in the world. And I know it, a lot of people in the body of Christ, I'm just talking, Lord, you want me to talk? Okay. A lot of people in the body of Christ, they just don't have that. They don't have the kind where they, you know, they go to church because somebody makes them or they feel like it's Sunday and it's obligated, but they don't want his glory. Are y'all hearing me? Some people just see it serving God as a chore, not as a privilege. God, I gotta go to church. Stay home. Might as well because you're not gonna encounter his glory. Joshua stayed at the tent because he knew where the glory was at. And the, I just wish I can see when the majority of the body of Christ is going to church or doing kingdom work because they just love him, not because they're trying to get something out of it, you know? So the tent of meeting is very important. We all need one. Where is your Gethsemane? Where that though? All right. I am sorry. I, I was being serious and then I had to throw that in there, didn't I? That's just me, goofy. Verse 17. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you ask because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses, oh, you know me by name? Verse 18. The perfect time to ask then. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. Oh, you like me, Lord? Yes, I do. Okay, I got a request. I want you to show me your glory. And God said, ooh, it's a tall order, Moses. I'll tell you what, I can't show you all of me, but I can show you a part of me that's still glory. You want to see me? Yes, I want to see. You sure you want to see me? I do. There's a rock over there. Let's read the Bible. What did he say? Let he say, what did he say? And then he says, verse 19, the Lord says, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you. I will proclaim my name. He's saying his name. And the Lord, he said, I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one can see me and live. But look, notice what he says. Lord, show me your glory. I'm going to show you my goodness. That is my glory. I will show you mercy, long suffering. I will show you compassion because you can't handle all of me, but you can handle this part of me. So a lot of times the glory of God is the goodness of God in your life. God is just good. And we say that, I know the old saints will say, God is good all the time. Y'all know that, right? But that's the glory of God. He says, I'm going to show you this. And then he says right here, verse 21, then the Lord said, there's a place near me. I, like, I love this part. There's a place near me. And it's like, if it takes you the rest of your life, you got to discover the place that's near God. Y'all hear me? There's a place that's near me, he says, where, where you are, where you may stand on the rock. Who is the rock? Jesus. There's a place near me stand on the rock and my glory will pass by and I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you from my hand until I pass by. Verse 23, then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face will not be seen. The word is powerful. This scripture has been there forever. Never seen it like that. He says, I got something for you, Moses, and it's close. It's closer than you think. You think the kingdom of heaven is you have to go all the way over there and do this. No, it's within you. It's so close. You got to stand on the rock and I'm going to put my hand there and I'm going to pass by proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the Lord's presence. And then when I take my hand away, you're going to see my backside. You can't see my face but I will show you all the goodness. You will see what I've already done and you will know that's me. That's why your face is shining, Moses, 
because my hand touched you. Oh my goodness, I, I know I don't have any selling tapes, but I would love to buy this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to this podcast again at work, I bet you. But listen, um, God, God's glory is like translated as his goodness. You have to read the word for yourself and you have to meet him. It's good for us to come to church and learn together, but church should be a supplement of what you're already doing at home. Now, if you don't have a prayer life at home, if you don't have a Bible reading at home, when you come here, it's very difficult to plug in because you have no fellowship with him. And some of us can still plug in, but you can be so much further down the road if you just develop one for yourself. And I'm telling you what I know. I think the only thing that kept me going in ministry for 17 years is I just knew how to just kind of sit down and talk to God. That's all I did. I'm not an eloquent speaker, as you, you all know. I fumble over my words. I say incorrect grammar all the time. Yes, right? Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> but you know what? God is using this, the foolish things, you know? So fill us, Lord. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your presence. Fill us, Lord, with you. We don't want just your presence. No, we want your presence. We don't just want what you have blessed. We want you. I pray, Lord, for these people. I don't know why. I feel like I need to, I'm crying or something. But no tears are coming out. But I feel this weight that God wants. God wants to give you so much of his glory. And it's translated in his goodness. And so many people just reject it because they don't want that. They don't want to say, show me your glory. They just want enough. And sometimes I can feel the heartache of God. Like, I, I just want to give you more. You know? It's sad that the body of Christ can be so watered down nowadays that we don't even want, we don't even have a drive for his glory anymore. We just want enough. We want the, the first presence. We don't want the deep presence. You want, how many of y'all want the real presence of God? I'm telling you, as I'm standing here, tall, dark, and handsome, with waves in my hair, I almost got waves. I'm trying to tell you the truth. It's gonna start in the presence of the tent meetings. Your tent meeting, that's where it's at. Yes, you can encounter him in a service like this, but it's at home. Y'all hear me? It's at home, it's close to you. Right next to your bed, or right next to your, it's close to you. But if you don't use that, you're never going to see the goodness of God. That's how he's going to feel you. That's how your quote unquote face is going to shine. That's how the atmosphere will change when you walk into a room because you have been spending time with God. But, you know, or you can just say, this is taking too long, Lord. I ain't got time to read those books. I ain't got time to sit there. I, my TV show is coming on. You need to hurry up and speak. If it's like that, then... You're, not, you're never going to encounter him. It'll just be a, a ritual. And forgive me if it seems like I'm just rambling. This is just what he told me to do. Um, but it's in the meeting places. So, show me your glory. I hope in this brief illustration, I kind of just showed you a little bit more of another side of God. Sometimes he can't give you everything because it'll kill you, kill your, your destiny. You'll probably throw it away if you see all of what God has for you. But he can give you enough where you can be sustained and you can still have the glory in your life. And it's possible in our generation. I know they say we're the latest see in church and there's no glory in American churches. No, that's a lie. That's a lie from Satan. The glory is there. It just people don't have an, a hunger as much anymore because the cares of this world. But if you can ask God to give me the appetite to have this, he will birth it in you. Some things you have not because you ask not, right? Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. If this message has been a blessing, you can help us spread the gospel by sharing this message with your friends. Also, if you're online, please be sure to contact me. 
either through our website at shakirministries.org or through social media. I would love to hear from you. Together, we can build a godly foundation in the lives of people. Until next time, please know that I'm praying for you and I hope to see you on our next broadcast.